Got it. We're live. Yay. Um, <laughs> hey, Ryan. Hey, Brian. Hello. How are you guys doing? Hello. Fantastic. Doing this great. Our, How are you? This is our this is our this is our smallest uh, confab so far. There's only there's only three of us. It feels feels empty. Feels yeah. Like there are spots we, we, spots waiting. We've like halved ourselves uh, in the span of a couple of days. You know, shout out to our friends at the Great Beyond who could not make it today, um, and all of our other co-hosts. Um, RJ, how are you? You know, and Brian, both of you guys, you know, weren't on uh, yesterday. Brian, you you missed a couple, but good to have you both back. I'm fine. Brian, how are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing really well. I've, uh, yeah, I I was actually dealing with a, a sick kid at home for most of the weekend, so was able to catch the shows. And my wife was out of town, so I was able to catch the shows. But um, yeah, kind of kind of busy during the day. That is so strange because I was dealing with a sick kid while I was at home while my wife was traveling also. Oh, it's fun. It's good times. The life yeah. of a podcast host. Yeah. You see Brian and I look very rested and happy. It's, it's good times. You guys should, everyone should rush into having kids as soon as possible. Um, so Ryan, uh, happy, happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're, we're going to talk about the show, obviously. Um, now that you turn you turned 22 yesterday? 22. So you're you're no longer half my age anymore now that you're 22. So I, I feel I feel I feel younger somehow. Um, <laughs> did you did you guys uh, Brian, did you get to watch the show last night? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, and I missed yesterday, like you said. So Ryan, I guess let's just start. Let's just dive in. What what was it like going in there? I mean, obviously, Glens Falls is that that venue is historic from a fish perspective. And yeah, um, interesting stops. My wife asked me the other day, she's like, why are they going to all these strange places? I was like, I think it's, you know, they're, they all have something in common, I think, in terms of the size and sort of the draw. But what was it like going to Glens Falls and, and getting in there? So it was really interesting, especially after Mohegan on Saturday night, because Glens Falls is half the size of Mohegan. And instead of being, you know, a casino arena, it's, you know, a dingy minor league hockey arena, which is, you know, as we all know, um, minor league hockey arenas are the, the jam band staple in the Northeast. You know, that that's where, that's where you go to see fish, the dead, et cetera. Um, and, you know, this was exciting for me. I, I'd never been to Glens Falls, never been to this venue but I know obviously all about the storied history of it uh, in this community, um, you know, Halloween 94. So it was just really exciting to experience it. Um, you know, I am a big fan of these GA arenas where you just get like a, a bowl ticket and then you can kind of go wherever. I think it makes it easier. You know, if, if you get in line at the right time, it makes it easier. Generally, if you have a big crew, it makes it easier for you to all sit together. You know, we were able to snag uh, the seats exactly that we wanted to. Uh, shout out to my mom, who's really good at talking to the security guards to make sure that we get in first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in in the bowl line, you know, the the, the floor line is separate. But we uh, we got Peter side. Um, you know, phenomenal view of the stage. You know, just as low as you can get. Um, so it was just fantastic seats. Um, it was interesting. You know. Last night, despite being half the size of the insanely sold out Mohegan, wasn't sold out. Um, and when the show started, you know, behind the stage was open, but it was pretty much empty for, um, you know, the beginning of the show. And it, it, it filled in a little bit, but it was really interesting to me, you know, seeing Glens Falls, which is definitely not an area where either band would have trouble drawing a crowd that, you know, a 4,800 capacity venue, especially one with a history like that, wouldn't have been a hard sellout like you know Lowell and Mohegan were. I heard that the lines getting in were were pretty insane. Um, did it did everything fill up after a while, or did it still? I mean, it obviously felt less crowded than Mohegan. It sounds like, but did it did it start to fill in? Yeah, you know, I I think the behind the stage being pretty empty was also um, because of the fact that the whole thing was GA, so nobody's going behind the stage unless they, you know, they can't find seats elsewhere generally. Um, so, you know, I would say the venue was 70% full um, when Goose went on. And then by the time, you know, we were like 30, 40 minutes into Goose set, Goose's set behind the stage and started to fill in a good amount. Brian, what, um, tell us about the kind of the, the set as it unfolded. And also it's just before you do, I've been 
I've been learning about lgoose.net over the past, you know, however many years, a couple of years, but now I can look at goose sets on fishnet for this tour. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty weird to see goose sets on, uh, on, on fishnet, but Brian, tell us about this, like the first opening of, of this set and what, what your impressions were from the, from the start. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and let me say, RJ, I've been DMing a lot with biz archive, Scott over the last over the last week or so, so so that's been fun. Yeah, um, yeah, you guys are uh, you guys are collaborators, setless yeah, thread buddies, for sure. Um, yeah, so so ready opener. Uh, yeah, I, I actually was uh, was thinking slow ready was on the way, um, but uh, but we got the so opener, um, you know, and I'll kind of break this set really into into, I guess maybe almost three different parts, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, to start off, we had the So California Magic, this new song Thatch, and then the Don't Do It cover. And so um, and then and then I guess my part two, which we'll get to is is the huge Madavan. And then the part three is obviously the, you know, the, the tray bit. But um, so that 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 part one, those first four songs, um, you know, I kind of thought, you know, and we talked about this last time I was on, but. You know, I, I really liked Turbulence as the opener. Obviously, Drive's a great opener. Um, so Ready is is I just I always kind of end up with mixed feelings about So Ready. I mean, it is a it's a it's a fiery jam, mm -hmm. um, and it might just be one of those things where I've just a song you've heard a lot that hey. that's always kind of been middle of the road for you. Team um, Slow, and I am Team Slow. Um, Same. And then uh, so so anyway so so you know de but decent opener. I mean, huge uh, huge solos. Uh, by both Peter and Rick, as always. Um, and then the California Magic, uh, you know, which is one of the new songs that I really like. Um, not, you know, you get into these arena shows, though, and you can tell they've been, you know, handpicking what they want to play really throughout these sets, right? And so there's a lot of stuff that we normally would see in four shows that I don't think we're going to see in this whole tour, you know. Um and California Magic, I think, is probably, you know, right on that boundary, you know. Um, but I love it. I was happy to see it for sure. And then we got this it's new song. It's all about song. the singing, you know. It's like all about the, I mean, it's just like those songs, like just that's how I feel about Turbulence. Like it's just Rick's singing and the the cohesive playing of the band. Like they're they're good songs, you know. But Matt it's, it's Cam more about it's the, the Matt song. Campbell effect. The, the, right, the Rick, right. Matt Campbell songwriting partnership, which, you know incredible i actually i i saw matt last night um i i didn't have a chance to say hi to him but he was there so nice but I, I, i'd like to i'd like to hear everybody's thoughts on on this new song thatch yeah um i thought uh you know i made a comment to to ryan and neil this morning um at the very very beginning it sounds real kimaki to me mm. um mm -hmm. and the nice little jam i mean they made the comment that it was two days old um, so one thing that that tells us for sure is that this song will likely change and, uh, you know, be enhanced or augmented in, in, in some way, but, mm. uh, but for a first time, you know, for a first time play and I listened back this morning, I mean, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice song. And, and, you know, Neil made the comment too, that I, that I very much agree with that. It feels like, like something that could easily be a vehicle to go uh, bigger places. So. Also, really cool to, you know, Rick said that the song was only two days old and it sounds that cohesive and really, really fits the band's sound. I, I really enjoyed it. Seemed like it went over great, uh, you know, with the crowd as well. We had uh, a couple of guys next to us who said they'd, you know, been to like 280 fish shows the first time seeing Goose. Uh, and they had a great time last night. They loved the set, which was awesome. Um, you know, as you mentioned with So Ready, the thing is, it's a great opener, but yeah, it's, it's, you know what you're going to get for 12 minutes. There's not really that feeling of unpredictability or like, is there going to be a big jam on this? Um, and yeah, it, it does seem to, you know, maybe blend together after a while, like all the different versions, which is why I am also a proud member of Team Slow. Um, but, you know, seemed to really, really be great in the room last night. Again, that's a song that fits in an arena very very well um and your point about cali maybe not being as good for that arena setting they definitely have to adjust the way they play that i think for sure you know they've been playing it in a lot of smaller venues where a slower song like that 
doesn't really get swallowed up by the crowd. And, and it felt like, you know, as much as I love Cali magic, and I was so happy to see it last night. Um, it, a, a little bit of the effect of the song may have been lost in the bigger venue. And I found that has not been happening, you know, very much at all with goose tunes on this tour, you know, as we've discussed on pretty much all these episodes, their catalog is so good in the arena setting for, you know, 95% of the time. And I think there is a place for Cali in the arena setting. I just, they may have to approach it a little bit differently, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, I didn't notice like on the listening back. So I think if you're there, it's a totally a different feeling. And um, on that note, we're going to add Joey who was there. Hi. Yo, what's going on everybody? Hey, he made so, it. Uh, sorry, I'm could, late. All good. Could you hear us? Could you hear that part of the discussion? Oh yeah, I was listening to a good what, portion of it. What's your uh, what What do you think about? Well, I guess about the California Magic, just you know, and and kind of adjusting it, um, but also that new song. So California Magic, honestly, when they first started playing it, I thought it was Gun Street Girl for a second, which like would have <laughs> really taken me back. But yeah, I mean, as soon as the lyrics start going, you can tell what it is. Um, yeah, California Magic. I don't. know. It's a standard song. I like what Ryan was saying of like turning it into an arena rock song like the chorus itself is pretty um yeah pretty sing-alongable so i think a good amount of the crowd at least if you're uh you know familiar with goose could sing along to it but i would imagine like playing it on the west coast must be something totally different like west coast pride comes out and just belts that uh chorus but yeah i liked it uh so ready i was stuck on security line for a little bit so i came in about two or three minutes into so ready which was like perfect made it for the jam um yeah it was yeah great opening song to get the people going and then what was the second song again sorry guys second song uh, was, the second song was cali and cali then, and, and then, then well, thatch oh yeah yeah the new song anything that uh you know features peter on clev for a majority of the song i'm on board like That's, it's just funky it's danceable yep. that song's gonna go places for sure i hope they play it again before the tour's out mm-hmm Hundred percent. Yeah, I, 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 you know, we, you guys, uh, RJ and Brian, you guys talked about Thatch a little bit, but yeah, I just want to say it, it, it felt really good, and you know, everybody love knows how much I love Clav, and you know, so another Clav, yes, Brian, birthday Clav, uh, it was <laughs> very, very exciting to hear. You know, I look forward to seeing this song develop because it absolutely will, it absolutely will get jammed out uh, in the future. And yeah, Joey, I agree. I really hope it makes another appearance later in the tour. Uh, I didn't yeah. check the soundboards. What'd you say? And sorry. How long was the song? 10 or so minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Um, Joey, by the way, I saw you when I watched the Saturday night stream on Sunday morning, saw you on the rail as, as, as promised. It was great. It looks like you guys were having a blast up there. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. We were going nuts. We almost tore the rail apart during, uh, Push until the day. We almost ripped it up from the ground, man. It was so much fun. <laughs> Trey was just giving off so much energy. It was it was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Ryan, where do you where do you put "Don't Do It" in in terms of Goose covers? That's it's up there. I you know love this cover. They're they're so good at covering the band. Uh, even though you know this technically isn't a band song, they're covering the band version. Obviously, like a lot of people, you know. As much as I absolutely adore Don't Do It and Madhavan, I was a little bit sad to see them both get played without, uh, you know, Horns and Trey, respectively. Um, But, you know, both versions killed. Uh, Rare to see a mid-set Don't Do It as well. It usually comes in the set closer encore slot. Um, But it's a great tune. So it, it worked really well. And, you know, the band is a very upstate New York band, so it... You know, it fit the the vibe of where we were, um, and everybody in the crowd loved it. Brian, what about you? How, how do you are you are you on on? Don't do it. I'm I'm not quite as pro. Don't do it. Um, I'll take you know I'll take you know three or four. Uh, you know I, I I guess for for band covers I guess I'd have it number three right between. Walcott, after Walcott, or, or, and after Cleveland. Walcott uh, and Cleveland, but uh, and then uh, you know and then Rock Rockdale that's a band song too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
such a great band song. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, and, and like Ryan said, yeah, I mean, it was kind of surprising to, to see that pop up uh, where it did. Um, and yeah, so I think at this point in the set, I, I was I was maybe starting to get a little bit of antsy um, for for them to, to maybe step it up a notch um, in, in my mind. They so did. they did. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. What happened then, Ryan? And then um, what was really cool in this mod of on to me is normally, you know, when Peter starts throwing out these aggressive synth noises, it's from the the prophet um, or, or over the summer, you know, from his Moog matriarch, which the, these two synths have come into the rig relatively recently and have been used for these wilder sounds where the Nord lead, which is the one behind him on top of the vintage vibe that's been in his rig forever, he's used mostly for like softer like the swells and stuff like that and last night these really crazy aggressive synth noises were coming out of the nord lead which was really cool to me you know peter also um has such a huge smile on his face whenever he makes weird synth noises and from where i was i had a perfect view of him like his just look of glee um and yeah that that dissonant jam in modavon was incredible last night um, you know, I just, uh, Peter just dropped the soundboards a little while ago. So once we get back on the road, after we do this recap, I'm going to put on that mod and I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah. I got out there. Uh, Joey, where, where did you end up? Did you end up, were you on the floor or were you, where were you, uh, where are you watching this from? So yeah, because the security line was so long by the time I got in, I was expecting it to be crowded enough to fight my way through the floor, but it was maybe half full by the start of the show. So I ended up going across uh, the floor to Trevor's side. And there were a bunch of spinners over there. So I knew, all right, that's probably going to, there's going to be the most space. So I hung out with them and just <laughs> danced as hard as I could to keep my space that I had. Um, and then it really paid off for that Monavon. Just the whole crowd was moving, at least around me. Trevor's yeah. side was rocking uh, the whole time. And then, you know, so they kind of brought it back down. Everyone kind of stopped. You know, people started filtering a little bit, a little bit more. And then really in that jam, Ben was like leading it for me. I was just listening, keying in on him the whole time. And like, it was very yes. And that improv of like, mm -hmm. somebody made a change. Everyone else was right on top of it. Everyone else building on top of it. Um, so yeah, the MVP of the night for me was Ben because of that lot of on jam. Yeah. Got out there. Um, and so, all right, Brian, do you want to take us through the, the, the trace it in? Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, just real quick on, on the mod Yeah. I mean, that was, that was kind of the most, uh, you know, spacey, you know, Goose has gotten on this tour. Um, yeah. That, that was that was the first time they really kind of, kind of took it down like that. Um, so so which was really cool. And then it almost sounded like a Shama jam um, when they brought it when they kind of got it got it going blissy a little bit in that Madavan as well. So um, and we kind of hear that pop up in in jams from time to time um with goose so cleveland drip um, fields especially yeah, yeah and it's i was just gonna say and it's generally generally they do, they do that in really good versions of stuff so um yeah re yeah really solid madavan um you know also the longest jam that they've done um you know without trey yeah um and so yeah so then you know we you know we got the red the big red bird um the big red bird. that 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 i think that i think a lot of people were expecting that that was going to be something that, that Trey was going to sit in on. Now, what I wasn't expecting was Trey to take a turn on the lyrics, yeah, uh, which is just so cool. And and on this song in particular, because of the nature of the song and, and how personal it is for Peter, um, I, I couldn't help but immediately go to uh, Bobby singing Miss You. Um, mm. Kind of just made me think of that made me think of that right away. Oh uh, yeah. Just, you know, having your, having your, your great, you know, guest come out and then taking a turn on something that's so personal for you. And you could see it on Peter's face. I mean, I mean, what a, what an awesome moment for him to have written that song. And it's not that old of a song either, uh, yeah. you know, to be honest and, and to be standing there, you know, playing along and watching Trey, you know, sing these personal words. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really amazing stuff. It makes me really, really happy for Peter. But um, so yeah, and very then happy. yeah, yeah, and then um, you know another another really nice Trey Rick jam. Um, some of these, uh, it, it's probably unavoidable, but some parts of these jams do kind of start to sound, you know, a little similar. 
um, that's I, I think I know I think I really started to, to think that last night um, mm-hmm. but uh, but I will say the peak that they took Redbird to uh, was 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 huge and it was very cool um, so yeah yeah killer ending uh, to Redbird and yeah yeah really really fun awesome version yeah, I, yeah, I um, did want to. I did want to send this better. in the chat because I wanted everybody to be able to see the the spelling of this, and I thought of this during the show last night, and I chuckled, uh, and so I hope somebody else gets a chuckle out of this. Uh, <laughs> straight bird, um, but yeah, the red yeah, bird check, is check great. out Storm Sounds merch site for <laughs> for that. It's going to be all you know. You can get. You'll probably be able to get mugs, shopping bags. <laughs> of course, we got it all. <laughs> all kinds of merch. I will um, say. Yeah. Ryan, just real quick, they, you guys, uh, if you watched the webcast, you saw Peter was wearing a Glens Falls Redbirds jacket. They were a minor league baseball team that played the 1993 season in Glens Falls um, oh. and and only for that year. Um, and now they play in in State College, Pennsylvania, which I'm makes sorry. no sense. Ryan, Brian, did you not dig up that piece of trivia to influence your fantasy picks? I'm, I'm disappointed in you. Yeah, that, no, that's a miss. That's that a miss seems for like sure. something you would have been all over. I do try to I do try to think of you know the venue name the town, you know, uh, the 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 state you know bird, but uh, just we we didn't get that one last night. RJ, you got to clue me in on that ahead of time, bro. I know, I know. <laughs> Next, I will. I was. I now I need to participate in these these fantasy things. Um, do you guys and 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 the mayor of Glens Falls declared it to boost day? Oh my God, I I love that. Um, yeah, <laughs> Which is that ridiculous. that was that was great. So, so I guess that name is not going away. I was kind of hoping that name would go away, but it's not now. Now that it's been declared as a as a name of a day, um, it's it's too much. It's too much for me. But I'm gonna just let everyone else keep it. Are you um, a truth person? Um, and I just I think Tab and Goose. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't need to. I don't need to combine them. Um, but that's my own. That's my own issue. Um, Joey, what the sit-in with Trey, the Breadbird, hot tea? What what was your take on that? And sorry, Ryan, if you were going to say something, no, please jump Joey, back. can go ahead. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Where there were moments where it sounded a little repetitive. Maybe they weren't locked in, but they found themselves back to those. All right, let's harmonize these licks and like get back to center. And then uh, yeah, that hot tea. I mean, it was just grooving. The whole place went nuts as soon as everyone started to hear those words. There's uh, you know that Trey phrase. Vocal. Yeah. yeah yeah and then like yeah that's the one that people have been waiting for and it's surprising that i think like we were talking yesterday it took this long to pull out a hot seat and i think a, a lot of us were hoping for some horns sit-ins on that but it was just a fun way to end the set and you could tell i want to say it was the end of Redbird. i think they cut it a little short usually they go back into that phrase to end it but i, I was watching the clock there's a clock like above one of the sections just watching it the whole time it seems like all right we got hot tea in the back pocket we gotta like just close this down suddenly and then go right into it mm-hmm. um which i mean it sounded like a sorry the sun's right in my eyes uh it sounded like a good enough ending i think oh well we're like someone that, that uh-oh my back you're back now slightly slightly Sorry, I'm back. going through the mountains. So I, yeah, uh, well, I, I was going to say I was going to say yeah, about the Red Bird. Um, you know, it it felt to me while well, yeah, that, there uh, are some themes uh, that are starting to crop up a little bit more. Um, those those guitar harmonizations, guitar harmony, uh, if you will. Um, Buffalo. Oh. <laughs> um the the Red Bird felt to me a little bit more. Uh, improvisational than some of the other jams we've been getting uh, mm. the last few nights. Obviously, Portland, all I need excluded, um, but it felt like they're hinting at that expanded expanded territory again. And so I'm hoping, you know, we're four shows in, we've got four left. I'm hoping they start approaching some of these sit-in jams a little bit more like the Portland, all I need. Um, you know, we get some of more of these type two really long extended pieces of improvisation because we've been treated to so many am- amazing two guitar jams so far, and they've been so good. Um, but like, I'm I'm really looking for that, like you know, what we saw that first time that Trey took the stage with them on Wednesday, where he was like, "Okay, we're jamming. Like, you know, we're not just gonna, you know, be guitarists and have fun." Because I feel like that has now become, you know, what the expectation is for the tab set sit in. 
right? Like they're going to, you know, do some fretboard fireworks, uh, if you will. Um, so, you know, I'm really hoping we get more of that long form improvisation that they're hinting at. Uh, but yeah, this red bird was great. Hot tea was fun. You know, obviously you can tell that Trey's really enjoying himself. And I'll, I'll touch on this again later when we talk about uh, the goose sit-ins with tab, but I, cannot tell at this point whether Rick or Trey is having more fun playing guitar with each other. (laughs) Yeah. They, at the end of the jam when they all, when they come back to the, to the same riff, which happens like in every jam, it just feels like they're both like really proud of themselves and each other because it's really great. And, and I do think I was, I don't know if we talked about this on Saturday, but you can tell Trey's a kind of run. He's still in charge, you know, like, but, but only using his eyes. Like he's Mm. just like, kind of like, will look up at Rick and then Rick's like, okay, time to do whatever <laughs> Trey says. Like, it's sort of interesting because he's, he just, has, he's such a veteran, you know what I yeah. mean? Like he, and he has such presence that uh, it's just, it's really interesting to watch, but they, it looks like they're having a lot of fun. It's, it's great. Um, I was going to ask, you've been to, to all these shows. I was going to ask if it's getting like repetitive or if it feels repetitive just based on the, the format, but um I, they're they're all different enough like I, you know yeah i wish i had seen all four of those shows yeah i mean i you know i've seen i think there were probably there was a handful of songs that tab has repeated across the four shows you know nothing more than twice um but you know i've seen to boost four times like you know it, it i i would very much enjoy seeing the other four uh of the show and i'm very happy that i get to do one more uh on friday but it's going to be weird uh, being on the couch tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I looked today. It's five hours for me. My wife comes home tonight and I was like, I could leave in the Do morning it. and drive five. But five hours each way is too old. Unless you think I'm not too old, Ryan. You're not too old, RJ. You're definitely not too old. All right. I'll, I'll think about it. Brian, am I too old? Oh, absolutely not. All right. Great. Okay. It's back on the table. You're younger um, than him. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, what um what what did you think of the the tab set ryan um compared to the others like how, how do you feel like these tab sets are flowing um relative to each other and like how how did last night's land i would say mohegan is still my favorite of the four tab sets but tab seems to be getting more confident on stage with each night you know it, it felt in in portland following goose tab felt maybe a little bit lackluster but it's felt like every night they're gaining in confidence you know even though venues of this size aren't really that new for tab, it felt like they had a little bit of an adjustment um, at the beginning of this tour. Um, But they've been getting really, really good. You know, some of the songs last night as well, like wave of hope was phenomenal. Burlap sack and pumps. James's baritone sax solo. Oh my God. That was nuts. Um, You know, spin spin was much like um, about to run was at Mohegan where it's just like, You've got that groove. It's an amazing groove. And Trey's just ripping over top of it. Um, but yeah, the, the set last night was really, really, really awesome. Brian, what do you, what do you got? Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I would agree uh, on the, on the Mohegan kind of, kind of being my favorite as well. Um, but yeah, last night they played a lot of, a lot of songs that I like a lot. Of, you know what I mean? A lot of tap songs that I just personally like and, um, and yeah, and no, I mean, not much for me to comment on in, in terms of the jamming. Um, and, and, and to be fair, you know, most of these nights, um, I'm just like, I'm so hyper-focused during goose shows. Um, just I'm trying to do different, a bunch of different things. And I'm, and I'm just so hyper-focused that what I've noticed is, is that for these tab sets, I'm, I'm kind of like decompressing a little bit, um, <laughs> Uh, and not to mention just the other stuff I've had going on around me. So, yeah. so I haven't paid incredibly close attention. Um, but what I will say, and when I do, you know, when I do start paying attention and uh, that Mr. Completely was, oh man, was out of this world. Oh I mean, man. <laughs> that's uh, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't think it's a question that that's the best, you know, goose sitting in with tab. Yeah. Um, you know, jam that we've had, but yeah, I mean, that's, and it's probably right behind all I need just for, you know, across the two of all the clubs we've seen. Uh, it was just so good. And I mean, uh, yeah, Rick and Trey were just going at it on this. I mean, just incredible, incredible stuff. I really want to, want to go back and listen to that. Um, uh, I don't have the, 
live fish uh, subscription at the moment. So I might, I might have to, you can borrow I might mine. have to spend some money. Yeah. <laughs> you can borrow mine. It's okay. Huh. Don't tell anyone. This is, this is just us talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Who's watching? Ryan, I want to ask you just as a musician, I, the, I don't know what like mode Trey's playing in on Mr. Completely, but it felt like it took them a little bit to get aligned. Like mm -hmm. Trey kind of changed the way he was playing a little bit that the way that he normally plays that song. Yeah. And I don't know if they were just in like a different key or, or a different like way of playing it, but then they, they sort of both adjusted a little bit and then it got locked in, but I don't really know what was happening, but it felt to me like there was like a little bit of an adjustment period. I'm not sure if that. Yeah. So the, the song is approached different ways with fish and with tab like fish, you know, obviously they finish the song, they stick to the key and they jam it out with tab. They generally, you know, they play around in the key a bit, trail, do some vamping, and then they'll do some modulations like they do for like solos with the horns or keys or whatever. Um, and so last night was cool because instead of, you know, just a short vamp and then modulate into a horn solo, we had Trey and Rick going at it for like a minute or so before that happened. And then we got, um, you know, they passed it off to a keyboard solo and it was so cool. I don't know how visible it was on the webcast, um, but, you know, Peter's taking this piano solo and he kind of like, you know, makes a motion over to Ray to take something and Ray's just like, no, like, keep going, keep going. They were just egging each other on. And it was, uh, that was really it was cool. Such that, a was, joy. that was great to watch on the yeah. webcast. Cause they had, a, they had the camera up close on, on Ray and Peter. That was one of my notes, like watching That's Ray, awesome. like being like, keep going, keep, yeah. keep going. Which is and really egging cool. him on like on the organ as well, like playing off of what he was doing on piano was amazing. And then afterwards, yeah, another moment where I couldn't tell whether Trey or Rick was having more fun when Trey cued the rest of the band to drop out so he and Rick could just, you know, trade trade licks for a minute. Uh, and not to mention, obviously, the horns killing it uh, in their solos as well. Just an incredible, incredible performance. So, yeah, I, I, so I wanted to mention that as well regarding, uh, you know, Ray and Peter. And so, I, I mean, I mean, look, this... That this must be a challenge, I think, in some respects for Peter. Um, and he's doing a phenomenal job, by the way. But mm -hmm. for him to be standing there next to Ray, I mean, that's got to be intimidating. Um, I, I mean, you know, for for as for as as well as Peter is doing, and for as great of a you know piano and keyboard player that that he's developed into in such a short time, it, it's still you know not Ray his. Paskowski. Yeah. No, I'm talking about Peter. No, no, I'm saying like it's 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 him, like as great as he is. He's still next to Ray Patchkowski. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So and not on his own, not as his own gear and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 yeah, you could tell last night that was the most evident that he was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my my thing over here, but I but I'm not gonna do too much, and I'm not, you know, what I mean, I gotta hand it back to the man. Right. And yeah, I mean, Ray wasn't having it last night. I mean, Ray yeah. was, you know, if if you if you're looking at this from a complete outsider's perspective, I mean, it almost looked a little bit like Ray was, you know, annoyed or something. You know what I mean? That he's like, <laughs> go man, go. Yeah. <laughs> Keep yeah. Going. Yeah. 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 It's great. And it's cool that like, you know, whatever happens after this tour, it's not just the fact that Trey and, you know, Peter and Rick like become pals and go on vacation together or whatever. Like all these musicians are going to get <laughs> to know each other better and, you know, Ray and Russ play in their duo in Burlington. And, you know, like there's so many musical collaborations that I think can can come out of this tour, which is which mm -hmm. is really cool. Um, so I have a couple um, wishes for for Fairfax and Reading. I only I'm, I'm not like a wish song wish kind of person, but I have a couple, but I'm not going to say what they are. But when are we getting Hunger Sight and Born? Is that well, is it I, just a matter I saw of time? something. I saw something in the chat that mentioned that tomorrow is Grammy nomination announcement day. So that could, you know, result in a hunger site. Um, you know, very, very, very hopeful that we get the Grammy nomination, uh, you know, for one of the categories that goose submitted for, uh, that would be incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I I'm thinking we would get the two of them as a pair, as the tray collaboration for the night. You know, I think it would be really amazing to get, the horns in on born you know have them at least singing back up uh, i think they yeah. would really lend uh, an amazing element to that tune and then you know trey ripping hunger site yeah. as he did at radio city but yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm thinking that's coming in the next couple of shows i so my four remaining predictions for trey sit-ins are hunger site you know i think of we course. all have that one uh rosewood empress and creatures 
Hmm. Um, and, and some of that's just by looking at, you know, what they've played already and kind of yeah. what's still on the table and things like that. So what about this? Um, Let's see. I, I mean, I don't see that as a, as a collaboration yeah. tool. Just, I just think back to the Dawes, like sit in at, at, at the Fred Fest where it just yeah. became like this long dead jam, which was like so awesome, but it's a little more, it's, it's less, less, less of a shreddy thing. But I, I mean, Redbird is, isn't exactly, you know, uh, a barn bird out of the gate either so yeah so i mean no that's I, I mean i would love it i would love that rj i mean i that that would be amazing what do you think ryan no i i agree on the the hunger site for sure um i hadn't really thought of rosewood for some reason yet um but yeah that would be amazing um I, I'm going to I'm going to say that I I'm thinking that goose may go for the no repeats. I know we're only four shows in, but the fact that they haven't, you know, any and there's still a lot of staples on the table. I think looking at what's still available, they could go four more sets, you know, because it's only one set. They could go four more sets without repeating a song. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I it's going to ruin see... one of my requests. I know. Uh, do you want all I need again? I just want Rockdale. That's fair. I fucking love Rockdale. It's so fun. It's like <laughs> it's it's just so fun. That's I'll fair. be surprised personally if they if they do this without repeating anything. Mm -hmm. It would I, be impressive for sure. I do think I do think C would work really really well with Trey, especially you know what they do with it improvisationally. I don't know. You know they they've seemed to be shying away from a lot of the slower songs. Um, you know they've they've been going straight bangers uh, for the most part. So, you know, we will, uh, we'll see what happens. You know, we got four shows left, but I'm excited, you know, no, no pod tomorrow, unfortunately, after three yeah. in a row, but we'll be back Wednesday at three. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And I'm, I get to see a Thursday and Saturday show. Um, and you'll, you'll see Friday, Ryan. So we'll have, yes. we'll have the rest of them covered. Um, all right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up because yeah. Ryan needs to get back on the road, back to the back to the motherland. So we're, I'm already we're gonna... back in the motherland. It's okay. Just... All right. Good. You look more relaxed already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, and Ryan. Thank you guys, and thanks everybody for tuning in. This is amazing and so much fun, and I think we'll keep doing it even after this tour because we we got to keep we got to keep it going somehow. Oh yeah. That's just yeah, a absolutely. Amazing. <laughs> it's super fun. Um, all right. Thanks everybody. We'll see y'all soon. All right. Bye. See you guys.